on uh, it will be closest to earth actually on december 19th uh, which is just the week before uh, christmas uh, i hope it will not uh, ruin any um, uh, holiday um, events um, um, so um, that's uh, when we should get as much data about it from Earth. In just 10 days, on December 19th, we reach the moment astronomers have been waiting for since this entire story began. 3i Atlas makes its closest approach to Earth. At first, this was supposed to be nothing special. A routine observation window, a final distant snapshot before an interstellar wanderer drifted quietly back into deep space. But the closer we get to that date, the more obvious it becomes that nothing about this object is routine anymore. The behavior it's showing doesn't match comets, doesn't match asteroids, doesn't match anything we've studied before. And with every new image, every new spectrum, every new anomaly, the gap between what we expected and what we're seeing gets wider. It all started with the Hubble image taken on November 30th, the highest resolution capture of 3i Atlas we've ever had. For months, Astronomers kept insisting the sunward spike was an illusion, a perspective trick caused when Earth briefly crossed the object's orbital plane. But Hubble didn't show an illusion. It showed a real, physical, persistent structure, a narrow, focused anti-tail, blasting straight toward the sun, 60,000 kilometers long, five Earth diameters. And the strangest part is that this structure appears no matter where Atlas is in its orbit, before perihelion, during perihelion, after perihelion, moving toward the sun or moving away from it, that lance of material keeps pointing directly at the star. And that's something comets do not do. Solar radiation pushes everything away from the sun at nearly 400 kilometers per second. Dust tails, ion tails, all of them follow that rule. It's basic plasma dynamics. Yet Atlas behaves like the sun is a magnet pulling material toward it. And just when skeptics tried to explain that away, we ran into something even harder to dismiss. Months before Hubble released that image, Professor Avi Loeb published a prediction that if Atlas released macroscopic fragments near its solar pass, those fragments would appear about 60,000 kilometers sunward by late November. And that is exactly what Hubble captured. Not approximate, not close enough, exact. That kind of precision is difficult to ignore. But the anomalies don't stop with the geometry. The color evolution is equally disturbing. When Atlas was first detected, it was deep red, the color of an irradiated crust that's been sitting in interstellar space for millions of years. As it approached the sun, it turned green, which is normal. Carbon molecules glow green when heated. But once Atlas passed perihelion and began cooling, it should have returned to red or gray. It didn't. It turned electric blue, and not a faint blue, a bright, intense, ionized blue, the kind we see in lightning, in plasma arcs, in Cherenkov radiation, inside nuclear reactors. Blue light in space usually means high energy ionization, not cooling. So how is an object moving away from its only heat source becoming more ionized? Some astronomers suggested the red crust may have been stripped away, revealing pristine ices underneath. But that doesn't explain why the blue is strengthening. A more uncomfortable idea is that the blue glow is exhaust, the signature of a high-energy burn that happened near perihelion, something resembling an Oberth maneuver, the same technique spacecraft use to gain maximum acceleration near a gravitational well. The red, green, blue sequence suddenly stops looking like chemistry and starts looking like propulsion stages. But color was only the beginning. ALMA, one of the world's most sensitive radio observatories, detected massive quantities of methanol and hydrogen cyanide in the coma. These molecules aren't random. They're foundational precursors for life. Methanol fuels microbial ecosystems. Hydrogen cyanide forms adenine, one of DNA's essential building blocks. And the ratio between them, 12 to 41, has been seen only once before in a famously strange comet that originated inside our solar system. 3i Atlas did not come from here, and yet it carries a chemical signature that looks uncomfortably like a biological starter kit. If Atlas were just a natural panspermia vessel, a frozen seed bank drifting between the stars, this would all make sense. But the release isn't random. The molecules are being vented through directional jets that appear almost targeted. If someone wanted to distribute prebiotic materials across new worlds, you would design something exactly like this. Load it with methanol and cyanide. Shield them inside layers of ice. Let a star activate the chemistry 
then eject the heavy particles that can survive atmospheric entry. And somehow, this is exactly what Atlas is doing. Then came the radio anomaly. Meerkat in South Africa detected emissions at 1665 and 1667 megahertz, frequencies associated with hydroxyl radicals. NASA explained it away as sunlight breaking molecules apart, natural radio noise. But natural emissions fluctuate. They rise and fall as comets rotate. Atlas does not fluctuate. Its signal maintains a steady, unbroken hum. Not communication, not a message, but the signature of something powered, something running. And while the chemistry and radio signals kept the scientists busy, the debris field behind Atlas changed everything again. Instead of shedding fine dust like normal comets, Atlas is releasing gravel, pebble-sized particles too heavy to be blown away by solar radiation pressure. Dust vanishes into the void within weeks. Pebbles stay, they linger, they settle into long-lasting orbits. If you wanted to leave behind durable materials, seeds, spores, sensors, data markers, you wouldn't use dust. You would use exactly what Atlas is releasing, and the timing is suspicious. The debris only appears after Atlas survives the sterilizing heat at perihelion, as if heat was the trigger, as if something inside said, now the cargo is ready. But perhaps the biggest shift isn't the chemistry, the radio, or the debris. It's the motion. Atlas is accelerating in a way that does not match chaotic comet outgassing. Normal comets wobble when jets fire. They tumble. They spin off axis. Atlas doesn't wobble. Its acceleration is smooth, consistent, and aligned with the orientation of its anti-tail. It exited its solar pass brighter, more structured, and slightly off the trajectory, predicted purely by gravity. The shift is small, but measurable. And it raises a question nobody wants to say out loud, did Atlas correct its course? Because in just 10 days, on December 19th, the geometry shifts perfectly. We'll get a side illuminated view of the nucleus, a brief moment when the coma might thin enough to reveal its true surface. Smooth, fragmented, metallic, cylindrical, angular. This is our one and only chance. After that, Atlas will be gone. By March 2026, it will cross Jupiter's orbit. By the early 2030s, it disappears into interstellar darkness forever. And here's the part most people aren't prepared for. The scariest possibility isn't that Atlas is artificial. The scariest possibility is that it's indifferent. It doesn't signal. It doesn't slow down. It doesn't react. It just moves silently, efficiently, purposefully, the way a probe would move, the way something automated, ancient, and single-minded would behave. Maybe it's a courier delivering seeds of life. Maybe it's a sterilizer dropping chemical payloads. Maybe it's a messenger carrying data from one star to another. Or maybe it's none of those things. Maybe it's performing a task older than Earth itself. In 10 days, we get our final chance to look directly at its heart. After that, the object that broke every rule of comet physics will vanish into the dark, taking its secrets with it. What do you think Atlas really is? A natural visitor? A carrier of life? A probe executing a mission? Whatever the truth is, we are running out of time to observe it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because the final chapter of 3i Atlas is about to begin, and it may rewrite everything we thought we knew about the universe.